What if Halloween night holds secrets darker than we can imagine? Imagine a group of friends excited to trick or treat, only to find themselves drawn to a house that seems straight out of a horror movie. What dark secrets lie behind its door? Or consider the eerie stillness of a new neighborhood, where the only welcoming smiles hide something sinister. Join us as we delve into true Halloween horror stories that blur the lines between innocent fun and something far more menacing. Prepare yourself for spine-tingling tales that will make you think twice about every doorstep you approach this Halloween. But before we start, I just want to give a huge shout-out to all of you. Your support is the heartbeat of this channel, and I'm beyond grateful for this incredible community. If you are enjoying our content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss a spine-tingling upload. And if you want to support us and help us grow, there are a few simple ways you can contribute. Sharing the videos, leaving a comment, or even checking out our support options on Patreon or Ko-Fi would be greatly appreciated. Your support makes a huge difference and helps us keep bringing you top-notch content. Thank you again for being a part of this journey with me. And now, let's dive into the darkness together. Halloween is my favorite holiday, a time to embrace the whimsical without fear of judgment. Every year, I look forward to the party at my friend's house, which kicks off at sunset and continues into the early morning hours. This year was no exception. I wore my trusty black cape and a red waistcoat, perfectly coordinated with my girlfriend Mia, who looked stunning in a black dress with a red corset. Our fangs were gleaming, ready to impress the trick-or-treaters. When we arrived, Darkness had settled over the neighborhood. Familiar faces surrounded us. Ghouls, goblins, and all sorts of creatures mingled, enjoying the snacks provided by our generous werewolf host. However, one figure stood out. A disheveled young man in the corner, observing the festivities with an unsettling expression. His costume was minimal, a white t-shirt stained with fake substance and a black trench coat, giving him a scruffy appearance. Usually I focused on reconnecting with friends, but this stranger piqued my curiosity. New faces were rare at our gathering, and he radiated a heavy energy. While Mia caught up with friends dressed as witches, I approached the young man. Hey there, I said with a friendly smile. How's the party treating you? It's terrible, he replied sharply. Just like everything else in this messed up world. Hey, that's okay, I said, flashing my fangs. He didn't respond with humor. Instead, he shifted his gaze to a group of girls dancing to Monster Mash. Look at them, he sneered, just flaunting themselves to tease guys like us. They'll never give someone like me a chance. In that moment, I realized I was talking to someone filled with bitterness. You really don't hold back, do you? I asked. Why should I? He shot back. Why care about their feelings when women like them never cared about mine? I felt a mix of frustration and pity. You know, you sound a bit misguided. Nothing matters anyway. Just then, a police car drove by, its sirens flashing red and blue. A voice warned residents to stay indoors due to an active situation. To my surprise, a smile broke across his face. I noticed he had kept his hands hidden in his coat. You're starting to figure it out, aren't you? He said a chilling gleam in his eye. At that moment, Mia returned, and the stranger's expression darkened as she approached. She was beautiful, and it was clear she embodied everything he resented. Hey, who's your new friend? She started, but before she could finish, he pulled out a device from his coat and aimed it at her. The projectile struck her forehead, and she fell back. The young man laughed maniacally. You're all finished. I'll show you what happens when you look down on someone like me. To his shock, Mia stood up, brushing off a small scratch that healed instantly. Not so easy, she said, smiling confidently. He turned the device toward me, firing several shots that hit my chest. I felt the impact, but barely flinched. Really? I said, half-joking. That was my favorite shirt. Laughter erupted, breaking the tension. How did you... He stammered, but I seized his wrist, squeezing tightly. 
The sound of cracking filled the air as the device fell from his grasp. You'd have better luck taking me down with a pencil, I told him, watching his bravado fade. Bringing a weapon to a party full of creatures like us? What were you thinking? Laughter filled the room, and the mood shifted back to celebration. Yeah, we were all dead. We were Halloween ghosts. As he attempted to flee, I struck him down, and he fell to his knees, gasping for breath. He crawled toward the door, but our werewolf host stepped in, immobilizing him with a well-placed kick. Whether he was begging or crying for help was hard to tell. Regardless, we all ate well that Halloween night. It was Halloween night, October 31st, 2016, and I was just 14 years old. Two friends and I were out trick-or-treating in our usual neighborhood, relishing the excitement that came with donning our costumes and collecting candy. As 8th and 9th graders, we were practically experts at this annual tradition, causing a bit of harmless chaos along the way. As the night wore on, we started to notice a strange man. He was dressed entirely in black, black sweatshirt, pants, gloves, and a ski mask. He blended into the darkness so well that at times, we could barely see him. It was unsettling, to say the least. This man would stand across the street from us, staring without moving a muscle. Whenever we'd look away, he would vanish, only to reappear moments later from another location, his gaze fixed on us. At first, we found his presence amusing and began joking about him, playfully antagonizing this mysterious figure. Maybe he's just trying to scare us, I said with a laugh. We thought it was all in good fun. However, as the evening progressed, it became increasingly eerie. The man seemed to take our jokes in stride, standing silently, his eyes never leaving us. After a couple of hours, I felt a twinge of annoyance and decided to confront him. I yelled across the street, asking him to leave us alone, insisting that it wasn't funny anymore. In hindsight, I regret saying anything at all. Maybe if I had kept my mouth shut, he wouldn't have targeted me. When I told him to back off, he just continued staring, unflinching. What a weirdo, Alex said, shaking his head. It was funny at first, but come on. The rest of my friends nodded in agreement. We eventually walked away, relieved to escape the unsettling tension that had been building, or so we thought. As Halloween neared its end, we started to break apart. I had spent the night mingling with different groups, but now it was just me and Alex walking together for a short while. We discussed how creepy that guy had been, and I admitted I was a bit frightened that he might show up again. Alex dismissed my fears, chuckling and saying that the man was probably just trying to pull off a Halloween prank. After a few minutes, we parted ways, and as I continued home alone, the image of that man lingered in my mind, making me uneasy. I tried to shake off the feeling, but then I noticed a shadow up ahead, standing directly in the middle of the street at a four-way stop. My heart raced. I still had about three quarters of a mile left to walk before I got home. As I got closer, dread settled in. It was him, the man who had been watching us all night. He stood there, just as before, staring right at me, his presence more menacing now in the dim light. I had to make a right turn at the street where he stood, which meant getting much closer to him than I wanted. As I approached, I tried to act casual, glancing away and keeping my pace steady but my instincts urged me to look back. Each time I did, his gaze seemed more intense, more predatory. What do you want? I thought, my mind racing. Do you think you're cool? Trying to scare a kid? This isn't funny. I'll call the police if you keep this up. Then, as if sensing my fear, he began walking toward me. Panic surged through me. Luckily, I was near the street I needed to turn onto. And as soon as he took a step in my direction, I took off running, my heart pounding in my chest. Just then, a glimmer of hope appeared. A police car turned onto the street from a nearby neighborhood, and the officer caught sight of me sprinting away. He sped up to my side, stopping to ask what was going on. Breathless, I explained everything. How the man had been harassing my friends and me throughout the night, and how I'd told him to leave us alone multiple times. The officer listened intently and revealed that the department had received several complaints about this man. As he scanned the area, he spotted the figure trying to slip away and quickly moved to apprehend him. I watched in relief as the officer caught up to the man, the adrenaline still coursing through my veins. 
After the officer detained him, I felt a wave of relief wash over me. I was finally safe. I turned and ran home, my mind racing with thoughts of how that creepy man had waited until I was completely alone to continue his unsettling behavior. It was chilling. Days later, I learned that the man had been released on bail, and the news left me feeling uneasy. I couldn't shake the sensation that he had been more than just a prankster. To this day, the memory of that Halloween night haunts me. It serves as a reminder that sometimes, what seems like a harmless joke can turn into something far more sinister. A few years back my friends and I were out trick-or-treating, around the age of 13 or 14. This was our second year venturing out without any parents tagging along, and we were buzzing with excitement as we dashed through the neighborhood, eager to collect candy and enjoy the festivities. Every Halloween, we'd map out our route to hit the biggest houses, hoping to score those coveted full-sized candy bars. That year, a street of newly constructed luxury homes had just opened up, so we decided to start there before making our way to other neighborhoods. Since the new street was close to my place, we gathered at my house on Halloween evening and set off. We stopped by a few houses along the way for extra treats, then turned onto the sidewalk leading to the new homes. To our surprise, it was eerily quiet. No other kids in sight. We figured we had hit the jackpot by being the first ones there and raced to the first house. An elderly man answered the door and handed each of us a full-sized Hershey's bar. Thrilled with our good fortune, we headed to the next house, only to find no one home. This pattern continued as we approached more houses, each one seemingly deserted. With the large yards between homes, the walk felt longer, and after a dozen unanswered doors, our initial excitement began to wane. Finally, we spotted the largest house on the block and decided to give it a try. Its long driveway led to an impressive circular entrance. As we approached, I noticed a woman peering at us through a small window next to the door. But when I met her gaze, she quickly stepped back. I thought it was just her anticipation of trick-or-treaters, and I felt relieved to see someone at home. We reached the porch, and I rang the doorbell. Almost immediately, a woman opened the door, revealing another older woman behind her, the same one I had seen by the window. They greeted us with smiles, and as we said trick or treat, the door swung wide, revealing a massive table filled with every type of candy imaginable. I couldn't believe how much they must have spent. The woman invited us in, allowing us to pick two candies each. Without hesitation, we dashed inside to explore the incredible spread. We were all thrilled, but just as I was deciding on my second choice, I heard the door slam shut behind us. We turned to see the woman by the door still smiling, but now she told us to stay put for a moment while she went to fetch some dessert. She hurried away, and I quickly noticed that the other woman was gone too. A wave of panic washed over us. Moments later, we heard footsteps approaching from down the hall. I bolted for the door, flinging it open and ushering my friends outside. We could hear the woman calling after us to wait, but we didn't stop running until we reached my house. Breathless and shaken, we sat on my driveway, trying to make sense of what had just happened. We considered telling my parents, but we knew they'd scold us for going inside a stranger's home, something they had warned us against countless times. So, we kept quiet. After some time, we continued trick-or-treating in my neighborhood, now much more cautious and keeping an eye out for other kids. That Halloween remains one of the strangest experiences of my life, and my friends and I still wonder what those women had planned and what might have happened if we had stayed for that dessert. If you've experienced a terrifying event or have a horror story to tell, we at AG Horrors want to hear from you. Share your experiences with us and let's uncover the mysteries hiding in the shadows together. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more spine-chilling stories like this one.